To construct a representation of a battery, you must first start with the chemicals used to construct that battery. Now, two of these substances are going to be aqueous solutions. So a chemical that we also have to consider is water when we think about how the battery is made. We're going to take this list of chemicals used to make the battery and break it up and figure out the substances that could be oxidized or reduced. Since the metals are solids, they will go directly into our list. The aqueous solutions need to be split up into ions. Copper sulfate contains SO4 2 minus ions. Because of the 2 minus charge, we know the copper that's used must be copper 2 plus because we have a formula of CuSO4. So copper 2 plus and SO4 2 minus also go into our list. Sodium chloride is composed of Na plus and Cl minus ions, and water will round out our list of substances that could be oxidized or reduced. So now we're going to determine the substances that are oxidized and reduced using our redox table. Remember, oxidation is losing electrons, and a characteristic of a metal is to lose electrons. So to help us out a little bit, we know either zinc or copper is going to be oxidized. One of the metals will be oxidized. So we just have to find the metal that's highest on the oxidation table on the reactant side. We don't have to scan very far to find zinc near the top of the table. So where zinc is being oxidized. Zinc is the anode. Oxidation occurs at the anode. That means the other metal is automatically the cathode. So copper is the cathode. Uh, we can begin to label our battery now. The two metals, uh, one of them is in the beaker, the other in the porous cup. The metal in the beaker is the anode. Our anodes in our diagrams in this class will always be on the left. So we can label that electrode zinc and anode. The other electrode in the porous cup is labeled copper as the cathode. Now we can determine the substance that is reduced. It's going to be one of the ions from the aqueous solutions. So that should help you find what's being reduced on your reduction side of the table. So we're scanning along looking for one of or more of those ions uh, from the aqueous solutions. If we scan along far enough, we will find copper 2 plus higher on the list than everything else. Copper 2 plus ions are reduced. The half reaction is written here with 0.34 volts. We now know the substance that's oxidized and reduced. This means copper sulfate is our reducing solution and sodium chloride is our electrolyte. To get the overall reaction that occurs in the battery, we just add the half reactions together. This one's pretty easy since the number of electrons lost and gained are equal. Those electrons cancel. Our overall reaction is zinc plus copper ions. Gives us zinc ions plus copper. And the total voltage of this battery will be 1.1 volts. Now, just for a precursor to the questions that follow our battery diagram, I want to point out some obvious things that you already know. Zinc and copper ions are reactants. Zinc ions and copper are products. As a reaction occurs, the concentration of reactants decreases and the concentration of products increase. Those will come into play later on when we answer the questions about our battery. So now that we know the overall reaction, we can continue with our checklist of things we need to label in our battery. We've already can check off A and B. We've labeled the anode and the cathode. We're now gonna do C and D label the reducing solution and the electrolyte. The reducing solution always goes in the porous cup at the cathode. So copper sulfate is our reducing solution. We're going to go ahead and put the ions of that reducing solution in the porous cup. So Cu2 plus and SO4 2 minus get listed in the porous cup. The other aqueous solution automatically becomes the electrolyte. So we can label NaCl as the electrolyte, and just as we did with the reducing solution, split it up into ions and put it up into the beaker there. So Na plus and Cl minus go into the beaker. 
We're now going to demonstrate the process of oxidation and reduction. Oxidation occurs at the anode and zinc is being oxidized to zinc ions. We're going to represent that over here on the anode. I'm going to do it with an animation. You want to do it very much as it's written in the oxidation half reaction. Just don't write the electrons. Zinc goes to zinc 2 plus. So we have a zinc atom that's going to lose two electrons and become zinc 2 plus. I had a fancy animation. You want to write it like the half reaction. We're going to label that ox for oxidation. Now the thing about our electrode here is that the metal atoms are going to give up electrons and become ions. And because of this, the mass of the anode will decrease. So I just show a little chunk taken out there. Oxidation is the loss of electrons. The electrons are going to be lost and gained by the cathode. So we have to show the movement of electrons through our battery over to the cathode. So the electrons you'll see are going to whiz through the battery here from the anode to the cathode. That's another thing you need to label on your diagram. So you can label electron flow just like this. And so we're going to get a buildup of electrons on the cathode. And now we're going to show the process of reduction much like we did oxidation. Copper ions are positively charged. They're going to be attracted to this negatively charged electrode. They're going to go to the negatively charged electrode, gain two electrons, and become copper metal. So that is the process of reduction. So we're going to label that process red for reduction. So our diagram is coming along pretty nicely here. We've labeled the cathode and the anode, the electrolyte and the reducing solution. We've labeled the direction of electron flow. We have all the ions represented in our diagram, but we have not shown the direction that they all move. We have all substances made during their operation of this battery now listed in here. We don't have to put water because the water is represented by this little line here that shows we have a solution in the beaker and the cup. We have oxidation labeled and we have reduction labeled. So the last thing we have to do is show how the ions move. And this is fairly easy. It's just another mnemonic device. Cations go to the cathode. Anions go to the anode. And this is because opposites attract. The cathode is negatively charged. The positively charged cations will be attracted to the negatively charged cathode. So all the positively charged ions, you want to draw arrows pointing to the right towards the cathode. The anode has a net positive charge because of all the electrons that are leaving the anode. So then the anions are attracted to it. Anions move to the anode. So we can draw arrows to the left for all of our anions to show that they will move to the anode. And that is how you draw a diagram for a battery.